I'm Bob from Hawkwork Hardware and today we're going to take another look at these motorised draw stops. Um, this is going to be the last video in the series about these uh, draw stops. In the previous two videos um, which are linked in below, the first one we looked at what's inside them and how they work. Uh, the second video we looked at how we can connect them to the motorised stop controller so that we can use them with Hawkwork or another virtual organ software. But in this video we're going to have a look at how we can identify what the connections are on these actual stops. Um, because obviously there's all different sorts of all different ages. These are the, or this is one of the current range from Kimber Allen which has got the um, five pin plug connector on the back. Um, the older Kimber Allen ones have got um, solder connections uh, as you can see on there, on, they're on both sides um, and these are not labelled at all so uh, unless you know what they are you're going to have trouble using it. And then we've got even a uh, different style again, this is another Kimbrel and this is the uh, rocker tab type and this one's come out of an old organ, it's got a circuit board on top um, and this has got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this has got seven different connections on it. So um, we need to be able to figure out what these connections are before we can use the stops with our stop controller or any other um, kind of circuit in your organ really because unless you know what the wires do or what the connections do obviously it's going to be difficult to connect it. So this will be the last in the series on motorised stops. Um, hopefully it's just going to be a short video and we'll just explain how we can figure out what these connections do. So in order to find out what these connections are um, or what the pins are on these, um, the obvious first thought would be just to go to Google and type in something like motorised organ stops connections. Um, and if we look at the computer and we actually try that, uh, motorised stops connections, connection, let's put connections, organ, yeah, okay. Right, what do we get? Well, um, we get my video uh, at the top there, um, well the last two actually, so the previous two videos in this series, um, then something about Hammond organ, um, then something about Leslie speakers, what do stops do, um, classic organ works console control computer, uh, which I had a quick look at and he's got nothing to do with um, stops connections, and there's everything else but nothing at all about stop connections. Uh, and I actually spent about an hour um, searching online to see if I could find any information and the only information I could find was from these guys, um, organworks.com and uh, buried deep in one of their instruction manuals for something um, they've got a, about five diagrams of how uh, to connect different types of stops um, but that's all that I could find. Uh, even searching on manufacturers' websites like Kimber Allen, um, there's nothing there that shows you how to connect these things. So it's kind of down to us to figure it out. Um, now we know from the previous videos uh, that basically the stops consist of um, a switch, or be it that a reed switch or a um, a physical contact switch and two coils so it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out how those are terminated at the back of the stops so that's what we're going to try and do today so that we can work out for ourselves it won't matter what type of stop you've got or what manufacturer or who the manufacturer is we can figure out what these connections are. Now there's a couple of bits and pieces that we're going to need in order to do that we're going to need some kind of power supply um, that we can use to make the stops move and given that we don't know what the connections are and given that the power supplies we use for motorised stops are generally able to supply quite high current uh, if we make a mistake in our testing and we short the wires together or to the wrong contacts we could cause quite a lot of damage so I'm not going to use the stops power supply to do this what I am going to use are just two 9 volt batteries um, and you can get these from Amazon they're not expensive they're about £7 each or something um, yes you're going to end up with two batteries that you don't really have a use for after you've done this but that's probably better um, than managing to either damage the reed switch or possibly the power supply or whatever if, if we get the thing wrong using the real power supply so you will need 
in order to do this, two 9 volt batteries. Um, with the older stops actually one battery just about works, it's just about got enough power to pop the stop out. Um, but these are rated, uh, especially the new ones, it says on there 15 volts, uh, which you can just about see I think. Um, so two 9s obviously are 18 volts, that's absolutely fine, the extra 3 volts won't matter. And even if you manage to short these batteries out, you wouldn't want to do it for a long time, because one, you'd run the battery out in no time, and two, you know, if you're using thin wire it'll get warm, but if you make a mistake it's not all going to go wrong, it's going to be fine. The other thing you need um, is a little test meter, and then you, you can get these again on Amazon uh, and on eBay for less than £10, so um, it's, it's a worthwhile investment. You can use it for all sorts of other things as well in the um, building of your console, so it's, it's really kind of something that you're going um, to need to do your console project anyway. And I've just got these three little um, leads here with crocodile clips on, on either end. Um, you could twist bits of wire around and tape them on and all sorts like that um, but again the, these things are, are cheap they're on Amazon I don't know what they cost but they're, they're not a lot um, and again they're quite useful if you're going to be doing stuff in the long run so that's what we need um, to be able to test these stops and, and work out what's doing what so I'm going to start with this older um, Kimber Allen stop here so let's just get these out of the way for the moment and we'll take a look at this and, and how we can test it now the connections are brought out to these solder lugs on the back of the stop. Um, there's five on this side, one of them's broken off, we can still see where it went. Um, and there's two on this side, um, and there's the, the famous Kimber Allen logo. But what there isn't um, is any clue as to what all these different connections are. So you'll remember from the previous videos that we have a switch or a read switch or, or a contact but something which when you pull the stop out it turns on effectively and when you push it in it turns off so the, there's two of these contacts somewhere are going to be just a switch the other three um, which could be I don't know that one's been soldered to in a previous life by the looks of it um, maybe these three don't know yet uh, but the other three are going to connect to the coils or maybe four because Kimber Allen have a habit of connecting one end of both the coils together um, in, in their uh, draw stops, but actually in their tab stops, like this one, um, they don't do that. They have separate points. So that connection and that connection is one coil, that connection and that connection is another coil. And we'll look at that in a minute to see how we know that. But coming back to this one, um, what we need to do is figure out what the connections are. So the first and fairly obvious thing to do is to kind of have a look at where these tracks go and see if we can work out um, what's going on really. So if I <coughs> bring this a bit closer to the camera, we can see that we've got the reed switch here uh, and we can see that this first solder connection here comes along at that far. Now if we turn that over that obviously we can see that that connects to that part of the reed switch, that end of the reed switch. So this is one end of the reed switch. We know that already. Uh, the next connection down, again looking at the board, you can see that goes right along to that end um, and that connects to nothing at that point but there's the other end of the reed switch connected to there. So those two points we're 90% sure are going to be the reed switch. Now, these other connections here, let's have a look and see where they go. Well, this middle one kind of goes along and then it goes up and something connects through the board there. So if we turn that over and have a look, we can just about see inside there, um, and it's very difficult to see uh, on the screen, especially when I don't have it under the camera. But <coughs> if we look down there, if you're lucky you can see there's a little black wire that just pops through the board and that connects to here. Um, so that's something to do with the coils uh, and then these two come to the bottom and again we can see that there's two black wires that come through there and they connect to these two. So again there's a pretty good chance that these are something to do with the coils. So in order to prove that what we're going to do is, if we take our test meter, I've set this onto the continuity range, which means that's that's the one with the uh, picture of the, the little thing, looks a bit like a Wi-Fi sign, um, and depicts a speaker. So if I connect these two together, it beeps, um, and the reading on the meter changes. So 
we know that if we connect these across the switch which we think are these two contacts on the end here so if I wonder if I can well okay I'll tell you what we do if I just put the meter across these two contacts it's not beeping okay nothing happens however if I pull the stop out now so that's in the on position and I connect that across there again now it beeps so that confirms what we thought that these two contacts at the top here these two are for the read switch so that's good news we know what that is now so now we've got these other three so let's take our meter and, and just see how this reads so if we connect between the center one and the next one down that beeps and it reads 31 on the meter and if we connect to the bottom one that beeps and reads 31 as well so these are definitely the, the coils um, if we test between the center one and the bottom one it reads 61 which is pretty close to twice the 31 that we're measuring there so what we can deduce from that is that this center one here is probably connected to one end of both coils because we're reading 31 to there and we're reading 31 to there but if we test between these two ends we get 62 or 60 whatever it was um, so what's happening with that is this is one end of one coil goes through that coil to the center comes back through the other coil to here and that's why we're reading 62 so I'm certain from that that this is the center common to both coils this is one coil and this is the other coil so we can test that to make sure and also we need to know which is the on coil and which is the off coil so if we bring in our batteries and we're going to connect these um, so you've got the positive negative positive negative so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect them in series which means simply that we connect the negative of one to the positive of the other one and then I'm going to take a negative wire from the end there and our positive wire from this end here so if I connect the positive to what we think is our center point and I connect this negative wire to one of these connections when I get the correct one the stop will pop out and we'll know that that's the on coil so let's start with the bottom one so that doesn't do anything so let's try the next one up and that pops out so we're certain now that these two connections here are for the on coil and as I said before I think the center one I think the one that I've connected the yellow wire to pretty certain that is common to both coils so that means that if we touch the negative to here and this is the off coil that the stop will pop back in and I think that is the case so let's try that yes it does so we've already identified everything we need to know now about this stop so we know that these two connections here are for the read or the contact switch call it what you will we know that this connection is common to both coils we know that this is for the on coil and this is for the off coil and that's all we need to know for this to be able to use this stop um, so it's quite easy to figure out what these connections do these two on the other side um, why one was soldered to I have absolutely no idea if you look at it very closely um, it's got they've put a label over it but these tracks don't go anywhere well they go somewhere but they're not connected to anything there's nothing the other side of them um, so we don't need to worry about that at all all we need are these five connections here we can happily use that stop if we move on to the next generation or the, the newer current range of Kimber Allen stops they're, they've been a bit kinder to us on these um, because again if I bring this up to the camera here okay so you can see uh, it says read one which is that top um, track there has been marked read one um, the next one down uh, that if you follow that along it says at this end here uh, read one if I get the light right you'll be able to see it um, but anyway just about read it there so we know that these top two um, are the read and as it happens the, the next three are the same but they've they've um, labeled them so this center one here runs along up to there and it says common and then the bottom two 
so it's coil B at the bottom one um, and then the next one up there's a it says coil A but you can't see it because they've put these other bits over the top um, so that's kind of a, a bit more helpful but we can still do the same exercise as we did um, with the other stop if we didn't know what those um, connections were so it's just exactly the same test if we put our meter across um, what we think is the read which are those two top ones nothing happens we pull the stop out into the on position and we put our meter across there again and of course it beeps we turn the stop off and we take our batteries here and we think that it's the next three down so the next one we say is common um, the next one under that should turn the stop on which it does and the next one should turn it back off which it does um, and the reason it didn't do it the first time is because I managed to short these together but that is the whole point of using batteries if you're um, stupid enough to connect these together as I'm doing now which is really not a good idea but if you are because they're only small batteries there, there's no danger of big sparks big problems or anything else you can't hurt yourself with it um, it's just a safe way of testing it if you were doing this with the proper stops power supply and you accidentally touch those together there would be a hell of a big bang and a big blue flash and it would frighten the life out of you so so um, this is a much safer way of doing it. So let's move on then to the next um, stops that we've got here. So this is a, an older um, Kimber Allen stop and this is the one with the circuit board on top and this came from, um, I can't remember what make of organ it was, uh, but it, it came from um, an organ that um, that we worked on some time ago and, and they didn't want to keep these stops they were going to use touch screens so we, we took them out um, but it's got this circuit board on top and we've got a connection there a connection there a connection there two connections there um, and then four connections here now they're labeled at the back it says what does it say it says selector input underneath here um, doesn't really tell us a lot about it. It, it then underneath that it says coil um, and then on and off now I don't know how good that is in this shot let's zoom in a little bit and see if we can do that better okay that's better we got a better view of it now so just to reiterate that again we've got um, these two at the back which says selector input underneath these wires then it says coil um, next to this diode or whatever it is it is a diode um, and then we've got on and off so hopefully coil on off um, means just that but that's these two wires come around to the rear end of the stop um, so that's connected to these points here um, if they are the coil points then somewhere along the line is there's there's more connections because obviously two coils will give us four connections um, also we have the switch contact here so when we operate the stop we can see that that's coming up and touching this piece of metal so that piece of metal is brought out to a connection at the back just here so that's obviously one connection for the switch and the pin that contacts it as you can see when I move it there um, that's connected to the actual metal frame of the stop so the metal frame of the stop would appear to be one side of the switch and this connection here would seem to be the other side of the switch. So just from looking at it we've, we've figured out half the story and whatever this circuit board does on top we don't care about. We don't need it to do that because this was part of the electronics of the old original organ and we're obviously replacing that with our MIDI electronics. So <clears throat> we can see also that the metal frame of this uh, has a screw that screws in through the top there and then that comes out onto this circuit board and there's a little solder tag connected to that screw so that's good because the metal body of the switch uh, of the stop is one side of our switch contact and this little tab is the other side of our switch contact so let's test that out and see if that's actually the case if we get our meter with the stop in the off position and we connect one side of our meter to that little tab and the other side of our meter to that on top 
then nothing happens. If we switch the stop into the on position and we connect it, now the meter beeps. And if I move the meter into shot, you'll be able to see that the display, whoops, I've just turned it off, turn that back on and connect to there, you can see that the display goes down to virtually zero. So we've identified our switch on this stop. And also, if you look down in between the board, which I've just noticed as we've been doing this, um, you can see that there's some wires down there as well. And they come round to this red wire here, which connects to this little pin here, okay, which is marked with a plus. So there's a pretty good chance that this is the common for the two um, coils and that these other two wires on and off are the on and off respectively. So let's see if that works. We connect our positive to where it says positive and our negative from the battery. If we connect that to the on, the stop goes on and to the off, the stop goes off again. So again, we've managed to identify what the connections are to this stop um, without caring about any of this nonsense that's on this board on the top. Now, um, if we get just a regular Kimber Allen stop of the same type but without the circuit board on top, because this would be how it was supplied from Kimber Allen, as I say that circuit board was from another organ manufacturer, um, we can see more clearly without that how the thing works. So we've got these two connections um, here and we've got these two connections here and if we look we can actually see the physical wires here. Get that in the shot there. We can see the physical wires that are coming from the coil to these connections at the back. There's one each side. Okay um, and they come up through these holes for the other side to those two connections there. So um, these are uh, two connections for one coil, two connections for the other coil. They're not connected together. But again, we can prove it. So if we connect our batteries to one terminal and to the other ter uh, terminal of that coil, nothing's happening. So let's put the stop into the other position and do it again. And still nothing's happening, which is not good news. Why doesn't that work? Okay, so that's interesting. I've just learnt something that I hadn't realised. Um, and again, that's where this system is quite useful. So. I've just connected this, as we did, across one of the coils and nothing happens. So we put the stop into the other position and we do it again and still nothing happens. So my immediate thought was, okay, one of these little leads, um, they're not the most reliable things in the world, probably failed, so just test it all with a meter, only to find that actually these leads are fine. Um, so what's going on? Well, what's going on actually is that the way these are wired inside, uh, they're across they're not sort of that side, that side, this side, this side, it's that side to this side. So um, kind of found that from deduction, you know, we've tried everything else, uh, so let's, uh, let, let's try going across, and when you do, um, put that into one position, okay, so that's obviously the on position, so we do that, turns it on, so that's in the off, that turns it on across that way, uh, it doesn't do anything if you connect it to any of the others. Put it onto this side and that turns it off again. Okay, so that's a, an interesting thing that I didn't know about these stops. Um, but it just shows you how using a couple of batteries uh, and these leads you can kind of test here, test there, test everywhere and eventually you will figure out um, how the thing's wired. So that's a, a bit of a real-life case as to um, the sort of thing that you might expect. And as I said, even though it says uh, quite plainly Kimber Allen KA on the side of this, if you go on their website, um, you can't find anything that actually tells you what these connections are. Um, so this is a good way to find out.
So we've covered um, the ones with the circuit board. Obviously now we know what the connections are. Um, you could just leave this circuit board attached uh, and you could connect your um, stop controller to, this is obviously our stop positive supply here, um, this is our on coil, this is our off coil, and then this little solder lug here and this connection down here are the contact or the switch. So that would be easy now, we've identified that, we can connect that up. This type um, obviously it's the, it's the same stop uh, but without the circuit board um, but in this case we know that the, um, the coils are this side to this side so they connect diagonally across so that's the off coil that's the on coil I think if not the other way around but certainly um, they're connected diagonally and then from this screw on top here uh, to this point down the bottom is our contact so now we've got enough information to be able to connect those together. Um, the older type Kimber Allen stops, we've identified this, so we know that these top two are our reed switch, and then that's the common for the two coils, the on coil and the off coil, so that's easy, we can connect that now. And then finally, um, the current range of um, stops which are marked up, So, um, but they happen to be the same as this anyway. So. We've got our two connections at the top for the reed, and then the coil common, the on coil and the off coil. So that's how you can identify what the connections are and what they do. So um, I hope you found that helpful, and that is the last video in our look at motorised draw stops. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it all. Um, the next video will be on uh, lighted draw stops or lighted tab stops actually and how we can control those uh, and lighted button stops etc. So um, to make sure you don't miss that if you want to click the subscribe button and the bell button um, then YouTube can let you know as soon as I release that next video which will probably be a couple of weeks away. So thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next video.